Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our second example of the delta-delta circuit, but in this case, we're trying to find the phase current and the line voltage. And notice we're given the impedance of the load. Again, the impedance must be the same for a balanced impedance. And we're given the line current I sub A. Hmm, how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's go to the load. And we know there's a relationship between the current, the voltage, and the impedance. At the load, we can say that IAB, the current, the phase current through the load there, is going to be equal to the voltage, the feed in the current, VAB, divided by the impedance. But notice we are not given IAB and we're not given VAB. Hmm. We're given the impedance and we're given the line current. So what I need to do is, since only one of the three here is known, we can find the phase current because we're given the line current. So there's a relationship there. And we know that the line current I sub A is equal to the phase current, or the square root of the 3 times the magnitude of the phase current I A B with a phase difference such that we subtract 30 degrees from the phase of the, of the phase current to get the line current. Hmm. So if that is the case, we can reverse that. We can say that IAB is equal to 1 over the square root of 3 times IA. And we can take the phase of the line current and add 30 degrees to get the phase of the phase current. Remember the relationship between the two. If we were to draw that graphically like this, you can see that here we have IAB. There we have IA, and notice the phase difference of a minus 30 degrees. So if we go the other way around, from the magnitude, we divide by the square root of 3 to get from IA to IAB, and we add 30 degrees to go from IA to IAB in the phase. So that's why we have this equation, which means that IAB is therefore equal to 1 over the square root of 3 times the magnitude IA, which is given to us as 9.609, and a phase angle starting with 35 degrees and adding an additional 30 degrees to that. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So we have 9.609 divided by the square root of 3, and that gives us 5.55. So IAB has a magnitude of 5.55 with a phase angle of 65 degrees, and that's in terms of amps. So now we have the phase angle, IAB, and now we're ready to find the voltage from A to B, which would be considered the line voltage. And therefore, taking this equation, we can say that VAB is equal to IAB times the impedance of the load. Now, the impedance will be given to us in terms of real and imaginary parts, so we have to convert that so we can multiply. So this is going to be equal to uh, IAB, which is 5.55, with a phase angle of 65 degrees. And we're going to multiply that times. Now we have to convert this into magnitude and phase angle. So 18 squared plus 12 squared. Take the square root of that, gives us 21.63. Oh, 21.63 with a phase angle. I didn't give myself a lot of room here. So, with a phase angle of, so we take 12 divided by 18, that's uh, 2 thirds. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is 33.69 degrees. 33.69 degrees. And now when we multiply those two out, we get VAB is equal to. So we have 5.55 multiplied times 21.63. That's a voltage of 120 volts with a phase angle of 65 plus 33. That would be 98.69 degrees. There we go. And so now we have our phase current through the load impedance and we have our line voltage, the voltage across each of the branches of the load impedance. And that is how we find that.